Hi everyone, I'm Meredith. And listen, I'm just a girl stuck in my apartment looking for someone, well, anyone other than my husband. I know that's a little new and exciting, right? To talk to. So I found some people. We're talking fashion and style during the pandemic. I know it's probably the last thing on your mind as you look down now and realize you're still in the same pair of sweatpants you've been wearing all week. But don't worry. Kyla McCall is here to break it all down. She's the editor-in-chief of Fashionista.com. But wait, before we get started, hang on. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel, to the Let's Talk About a YouTube channel, so you don't miss any notifications and new videos and episodes. So go ahead, we'll wait. Tyler and I will wait before we get started with the show. Like, subscribe. Take your time. Okay, did you do it? All right. So, Tyler, welcome. Let's talk about it. Thanks for having me. Uh, thank you so much for being here. So I want to talk about how we're all figuring out style. It's probably like, it's got to be weird for you because style and fashion, so much a part of your life. Yeah. Except we're all, our world has now taken us to a place where we're all living in the same sweatpants for, uh, I'm usually like three times a week. So oh. Yeah. Versus seven days in sweatpants. <laughs> and we haven't gone shopping and bought new. And because our lives are perm indefinitely lived at home. Yeah. What has your role as a, the editor-in-chief of Fashionista become when, has our world gotten like a lot less fashionable? <laughs> I mean, thankfully, no. Uh, I mean, we're all buying sweats, but they're nice sweats. I live in Girlfriend Collective, which they have really bright colors. It makes me feel a little bit more dressed, even though I am still wearing athletic wear at the house. Um, and I think that we're starting to see some shopping come back, but mostly at Fashionista, what my role has become is reporting on how the crisis has impacted the industry in general, because like anybody else, it shut down a lot of businesses. Obviously, you can't gather in public, so you can't have fashion shows. You can't have stores open um and so everything everything has just kind of been in crisis mode so we've been trying to cover that as much as possible so how have things changed from the time of the actual shutdown mid-march to at least in new york early june we saw the beginning of a reopening and at this point now stores are open to a degree mm -hmm. for the most part they're open to a degree for pickup. A lot of them are doing, you can order and pick up. Um, and you people can't are clothes on. No, I know, which is hard. If you're like me, I have to, I have to try things on. I'm not a big risk taker in terms of fit. Um, but designers are starting to go back to work because if they can work in their studios, that's much easier. Although a lot of them are doing stuff over Zoom, um, like everybody else and FaceTime. So they're starting to go back to work um, with precautions obviously. And in terms of shopping, I mean, I think that's just going to be a, I think we're in for a rough year. I think the bigger retailers are having an easier time bouncing back than a fashion retailer, because like you said, um, I don't need a really fancy like ball gown for anything anytime soon. Uh, but I do still need t-shirts. I need sweats. I need underwear. <laughs> so I think that they're going to have an easier time than than some of the smaller, more independent places. How are those smaller chains or uh, brands hacking it still? Is it a massive struggle? It seems to be, but people are getting really creative. Um, so uh, I've seen designers do Instagram story uh, sample sales, which was really creative. Um, or doing kind of, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Brother Vellies, but it's a brand run by Aurora James. Um, and she makes shoes primarily, but other accessories. And she did something at the beginning of quarantine called Something Special, which for $35 a month, um, it was like a six month subscription. She sends you something in the mail that's this like handmade artisanal item. So I have a coffee mug that they sent out. So trying to get creative with, okay, like maybe this customer isn't looking for a $700 shoe right now, but maybe there's a way that we can still stay connected as a community. So mm -hmm. I think that that's where the most successful people are finding ways to get creative is by cultivating their communities. Mm -hmm. What do you think on a whole customers 
do still want when they're uh, shopping, whether it's online or they're starting to go into a store, what are the items that they're still looking for or what new have they found because of the pandemic? So I think it's really interesting. We actually just did a story um, about how at List, uh, Nike has overtaken Off-White to be the most popular searched brand for them because <laughs> people want to be comfortable, but they want to look cool while they're doing it. And uh, the other thing that I thought was really interesting is um, the Times ran a story kind of late spring about how more people were buying lingerie, which I thought was really funny. Ooh. I guess if you're staying home, and yeah, you're right. back, you know, you might as well be a little chic underneath. <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, not, again, not me. I'm in sports bra. I haven't seen an underwire in five months, but like... <laughs> Yeah, this has <laughs> this is underwiring. <laughs> wow. You're again better than doing better than me. No, I, I think these are the the few and far between moments though for those items. I have bought a few things because the sales are really good <laughs> this summer. Obviously, because I think a lot of people had a lot of stock that they didn't move for that exact reason. Um, and they just are hanging in my closet. I just joked to someone the other day that I like to go visit my clothes. Like I open my closet door and I'm staring at them and I'm like, oh, maybe one day. Yeah, I like moved my winter clothes out uh, probably completely, not until probably early July. Yeah. It wasn't until I had a pack to go away two weeks ago two weeks ago that I I realized I, I hadn't moved the shoes. So the the boots and the ups <laughs> were still with the summer dresses and I was like, yeah, we're gonna need we're gonna actually need a sandal uh to get out of here. So I very optimistically switched my wardrobe I think in April or May. Good for you. It's totally pointless exercise because it's not <laughs> like I'm wearing any of that stuff either. But I was like, I'll be going out this summer. <laughs> And what about, how, how do you handle, if you will, our unfortunate newest and most necessary accessory, the face mask? I mean, yeah. I, I wear it, I understand it, I respect it, but I hate it. Yeah. It's Especially in terms of fashion. My problem is that my um, my cousin Meredith very generously made us face masks at the beginning, um, but she made them from flannel, which was fine in March, but in July, it was mm -mm. less July. So um, yeah, trying to find ones that are breathable because I mean, obviously, I'm trying to be more active. I'm I'm getting out and I'm, it's nice out. You don't want to be outside, but you don't want to be under a flannel. No. Yeah. So, um, thankfully a lot of designers are getting into that, um, at kind of all different levels and a lot of them are making them, it makes sense, right? You have the scraps around from what you've made for, you're ready to wear. So they'll match the goods. And also a lot of them, because it's using leftovers are donating all the profits to, um, essential workers, which is really nice as well. That's fantastic. Like Tanya Taylor's doing that. Christian Siriano made news because he started doing PPE really, really early. Very early. early. And it's nice to see people giving back like that. It was so incredible to me back in March that more designers and retailers weren't doing that because it was remember when it was so hard to find face masks yeah and you you couldn't help but feel especially after Christian Siriano began like why isn't everybody like we actually need this I know there was a lot of confusion I spoke to a few other designers who really wanted to do it and said they were going to do it but there was a lot of confusion in terms of um most designers can't make stuff that is legally PPE that would actually functionally be medical equipment. Um, so that's why a lot of them have kind of pivoted to doing the consumer facing. So like if you or I just need a face mask to go to the grocery store, we can do that. Um, but they weren't able to fulfill hospital needs and things like that because those have, as you can imagine, like really specific right, right, right. medical standards. Um, 
And yeah, those were so short that I've just been making do with, at first I was just using scarves. I looked like my, I felt like I looked like my Nana because I would go out with a silk scarf over my mouth. Not that my Nana wore silk scarves over her mouth, but I had this leopard print coat and like a bright silk scarf over my mouth. And I was like, I look like my grandmother. What? <laughs> yeah, it was a look. It was a look, I'll it tell you. Look. It, at least yeah. you had one back in the day, you know, of, of early pandemic when we were all either just like, hiding under our couches or uh, ignoring it. I mean, I remember the early days where I was like, this is silly. We don't need, and then 24 hours later, it was, oh, okay, yes, we have to wear a mask. So yeah. Yeah. that sentiment was not long lived, promise. Um, what do you recommend, you know, as an authority in the fashion and style world for how to match, accessorize the, the face mask to whatever you're wearing, uh, wh what you like, which designers you like for buying these items now? Yeah, there are so many options now. Like truly, I feel like I get a press release for one every day yeah. at, least at this point, um, which is nice because they cover all different price ranges. So I know Bobble Bar, for example, they do a lot of costume jewelry. Um, they're releasing sets of masks that are affordable. And again, all the proceeds go to a charitable organization and they're really cute. And then you can get more independent. So I don't know if you know Susan Alexandra, but she makes those really fun hand beaded handbags that are completely, yeah, they're all over New York in the summer, most summers. She started making face masks that have, you know, her signature beading. It's not made of beads, but the beads are on there. Because <laughs> obviously, you do like an extra layer of <laughs> If you had it just completely beads, it would yeah. be. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and then I know, you know, for some people, having it around their ears is really uncomfortable. There are some designers like Lily Sadugi who make headbands that match the face mask. And the face mask, mask attaches to the headband instead of your ears. Yeah. What is your advice though for like either the face masks that people have already or just like even just accepting that you have to wear it and how you can still look and feel good yeah. when you go out? I, I personally like having a fun pattern like that makes me feel happy. I don't like the medical looking ones, which I know that they're probably safer but I don't need them because I'm pretty much just home, maybe at the grocery store. And I'd rather people who really need the, like the N95s and stuff be able to get them. So I like finding ones in bright colors that make me really happy. Um, I'm now starting to get to the point like you for a long time. I was like, well, I'm not going to need a ton of these because we're not going to be doing this for very long. And now I'm like, oh, maybe I need a, a wardrobe <laughs> of face masks. And it's good to have the rotation anyway, because I like to throw mine in the washing machine. Um, and I, that way I always have a, a new clean one to choose from. What do you think we're about to see with the new season with face masks? Uh, I, the new season, I'm so interested to see what's happening because normally in September, we'd have the spring 2021 shows happening. Um, and just because of everything that's been going on and designers closing down in the spring, this spring, when they normally would start working on those collections, um, I think everyone's going to kind of be cutting back a lot or pairing back to the essentials. I think we're going to see fewer of these big, big runway shows um, and things like that. But I do wonder how many people, like, I feel like the really big fashion houses, are, we can't be far off from like a $400 Chanel face mask. Right. Just, it feels inevitable, especially because that was already such a huge market in a lot of big Asian cities and like Tokyo and places like that. Like it's a common courtesy to wear a mask in public. Like they right. have no issue doing it. So I'm kind so of surprised. Right. That they're look. wearing, them, making them already? No, I haven't seen any. So I'm surprised. I feel like that's an untapped sales market. Are there trends for it that you're looking toward come the fall and, and winter and even next year for face mask wearing? Um, hopefully more people doing it. That would be right. a good place to start. Hopefully more people across the country doing it. I just think the more it becomes something that you can integrate into your life, the better off we'll all be. So mm -hmm. if you can pick up something that doesn't feel like, oh, this is a thing that I have to throw on, um, the better. I don't know trend-wise what we'll see. I feel like a lot of people probably still are kind of hoping this is not a long-term thing. So who knows if 
they're even planning for that. But I think it would be smart for more people too. Do you find it difficult being out and, you know, towing the line of, you know, when you see, seeing other people who may not take the same precautions as you or have different uh, tactics that they're utilizing during the pandemic? It, wouldn't the most unfashionable thing right now be to turn into a Karen, as they say? And like, how were, how do you go about like not turning into that judgmental being, if you will? Yeah. Also, what's the male Karen? Have we have? Is it the? Is it? A, I I don't know. I do want to know that. Right? Don't you think? <laughs> these they exist. Right. Sure. Right. Um. You know, for me, what's been most helpful through all of this, whether it's out or even when you're online, because I mean, I'm sure you've seen, but a lot of people tend to go towards the online shaming mechanism as well as look at these idiots in the park or whatever, right? Is um, I try to remind myself that everyone handles anxiety in their own way. And what makes me anxious and how I handle my anxiety is my business. <laughs> and that I should just keep that in mind when I'm looking at other people. So, and a lot of this too is, it's so much like, yes, it is personal responsibility. And I believe in that, but I also think we have to be careful in that um, you look at other countries and how they've been able to handle it and how their governments have handled it and how they're much better off now. And that's an important part of the equation too, is having that kind of support. Um, and guidance that I think we're lacking now. And I try not to blame individuals for that frustration. Cause I think that we're all frustrated at the systemic problems and not like a person that I pass on the street who is this close to me and not respecting the social distancing, right? Like that's, I'm doing my best and I am just gonna let that be that. Yeah, I am. I'm often told to stop like pointing, <laughs> pointing it out. My husband will say, stop, stop, stop being yeah. that. And I'm a little nuttier than me with all of this, but I'm one to be like, look at that, look at that, look at that. I mean, it's hard. It's really stressful. It's stressful. It's also like, what else is there to look at? Like the, the world in certain ways got smaller. Uh, you know, this is our only shared experience right now. Exactly. So, um, you know, just back to speaking about fashion and upcoming seasons. Yeah. You were very used to going to all the different shows. Mm -hmm. uh, what have you seen in terms of the evolution of those going digital? Have you been to any Zoom fashion shows or seen anything gone, you know, yeah. slowly digital in that way? So a lot a lot of people were experimenting with that because um, the menswear shows, which typically happen in June, um, they were all digital. And then the couture shows, which normally happen in July, like early July, all those went digital. So it's interesting, it's because fashion is such a creative field, but I think this is one way in which they can get really stuck in an old way of doing things. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people were experimenting with doing um, video or like a live stream or things that they shot like creative lookbooks or 3D visuals um, and not always successfully because I think you're so used to having the runway format. I mean, Dior went back to the runway format pretty quickly. They did a cruise show, um, full runway, full like setup, stage performances just with no audience and they live streamed it. Um, and I think we'll probably see more of that in September mm -hmm. is um, especially in Europe brands who want to still show who think that that's an important component of their brand image, um, figuring out a way to put on a show, but in a digital kind of digital facing format. Mm -hmm. What was, what were the less successful examples? Um, I think, it was Chanel who did a video that was just kind of like, it's because it's hard to differentiate between, um, this is like an advertisement video, right? Versus uh, we're trying to do this really dynamic format to show off a new collection. And I, you know, I'll give it to them. It's actually really hard because you have only so much time to show off a 3D object in sort of a 2D format. 
and you miss a lot of detail. So I think that that can be really challenging. Um, and also it requires a lot of thinking outside the box, which I mean, everyone pivoted pretty quickly, but it's, it's hard to push things forward when you're in freak out mode, I think. And I think everyone's in freak out mode right now. Yeah. So How has the pandemic, would you say, both changed you as a fashion editor, but also as on a whole, just changed this industry, which I would imagine it, it really profoundly has. Yeah, I think that it accelerated a lot of changes that were already happening um, in retail. I think that you were seeing kind of a slow decline in brick and mortar and big department stores. Um, and that obviously is happening much faster now. I think Neiman's is having a lot of problems. Um, Saks is having problems. You're seeing a lot of designers who were complaining for a long time that it had become too bloated. So a lot of designers were doing four to six collections a year because you would have um, spring and fall, which is what you think of when you think of a runway show. And then you would have a cruise or a resort or a holiday collection. Those are usually winter deliveries. So like November, December, January, February. And then they would have a pre-fall, which is a summer delivery. Because as you might imagine, that is what pre-fall is. It's just summer. <laughs> um, and in some cases, they were doing more than that. And so what you're realizing is they ended up with all this product because they were creating so much stuff. And everything shut down. And they're ending up with this excess product of their hand that now is on sale for 70, 80% off. It's just like the crash in 2008. Um, so whether they'll learn their lesson this time is hard to say, but they are making the whole schedule. Like, do I need to put on four runway shows a year? Do I need to create all these clothes that maybe aren't going to sell? Like, do I need to make denim if my brand isn't known for denim? So I think that you're seeing people kind of questioning the whole system of how things used to work. What's the best thing you bought on sale? Oh, um, what is the best thing I've bought on sale? I bought a Rachel Antonoff dress that I'm really excited about. Again, I haven't worn it yet. It's just, I, I hung it on the closet door just to look at it. Um, and I love her. I just think she's so funny. Uh, I bought a pair of Valentino shoes on the outnet <laughs> for a pretty good deal. Uh, I'm a big real, real shopper. I like secondhand shopping. So I've been combing through that as well. Cause it's a good time for that. A lot of people took time off when they were home to clean out their closets and send stuff off to the secondhand stores. So yeah. that's a good market right now too. <laughs> when hopefully things get back to even a more normal, even though it might be a very new normal. What's the one thing you're looking forward to either seeing on your credit card statement, which I would imagine like most of us has gotten a lot shorter and probably feels. I am saving a lot. Good, right. And, or you're looking forward to, you know, swiping or inserting. What's that one thing that you can't wait to spend on? Uh, this is such a cliche answer. I want to go like vacation. <laughs> I really, it's like I keep buying clothes. I mean, I'm kind of a clothes horse, I guess. Like I buy clothes even if I'm not wearing them because I'll wear them one day. I'm like, oh, I'll wear this one day, which is a bad way to show. It was how my credit card got in trouble in the first place. <laughs> Put it that way. And now I'm like, I would just kill to be at a beach. Like I would kill to not be in my one bedroom Brooklyn apartment. <laughs> And not that it's, I love my apartment, but it's like anything, a mountain, a beach, a f anything, I would take it. So well, hopefully soon uh, enough. Soon I know. Enough. Fingers crossed. Absolutely. It's, it's looking, things are looking up out there, I think. I think so. Yeah. Things are looking up. <laughs> well, Tyler, thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you for giving Hi. me. This is the first interview I've done. Uh, since I've gotten married. So this deal will start to change. Congratulations so, to you. Thank you. But now you gave uh, my husband some quiet time and gave him a little uh, break from me, you know, jabbering off hit to his ear. So I appreciate it. Of course. Thanks again. This has been Let's Talk About It. And we'll talk to you next time.